Hi everyone, welcome to Friends from Work. So if you're like me during this period and you've either been furloughed or you're doing the dreaded working from home, you might find yourself missing those people that you normally work with, the people you see on a daily basis. And that got me thinking, what do I love about the people I work with? And then it came to me. Nothing. Nothing at all. I mean, they're really a bit annoying, aren't they? Especially when people find out that you do comedy. And your work colleagues are always like, Oh, you must get so much material out of us. Or, Oh, can you put me in your act? That would be amazing. Two things. One, I find it funny that you think you're that exciting that I could get on stage and talk about you. Two, have you ever been to a comedy show? Do you think it would be in any way complimentary if I included you in my act? There is no good can come from that. But then again, I think the people I work with are entertaining because I talk about them on a daily basis. In fact, I talk about them at home so much that my children often tell me who their favourite character at my work is. Not like the real people, like this is some kind of soap opera. And don't get me wrong, the stories I tell it comes across a bit like a soap opera. And then that got me thinking as well. They are just characters, aren't they? I mean, not actual soap opera characters because I don't work in the entertainment industry, so... No. But the people I work with are the same as the people you work with. Yet again, I'm saying not literally, because some of the people I work with don't even do their own jobs very well, never mind do a second job. But what I mean is the same personalities at my work and at your work. These are the same characters. The roles are the same, but the actors change. So what I thought was, let's have a little bit of a run through of some of my favourite characters. Now these are not all of them, this is not a conclusive list, but I think these are 11 of my favourites and you know we might add more over time. So let's get started. Number one, we have the mother. There is a mother in every workplace. She's the one that's usually worked there the longest or it just seems like she has. She's into everyone's business, but doesn't like to interfere. Yeah. She also doesn't like to complain, yet frequently does. Her moods change so frequently that she could hug you or cut you depending upon what day it is. The one that I've got in my work is amazing. She is always getting people hot drinks. That's her thing. Always getting people hot drinks. She's basically Mrs Doyle from Father Ted. Would you like a cup of tea, Father? Ah, go on. Go on. I, I was literally sat at my desk the other week thinking, oh, oh parched. Could do with a cuppa. And like Cinderella's fairy godmother, she appeared by my side. Do you want tea? You can't say no to that, can you? Although I wish you could, because it is a blessing and a curse. Because what she makes isn't so much tea, as in it's tea flavoured milk. And I suffer with tepidophobia, which is fear of a badly made boo. So I've taken to asking her for a second tea bag. Not to put in the cup, just so that I can soak on it. You've got to get the flavour. The next character that I want to talk about is the one who's too cool for school. You know the one. She starts in work. Everything seems effortless to them. They're cool, but for like no known reason. They're the sort of person that when you start at a place, everybody goes, oh, you're going to love them. They're amazing. And you go, okay, great. Why? 
and you're met with a silence. And then they just go, you just will, you'll love them. To look at them and to talk to them, there is nothing particularly special about them whatsoever. Yet I guarantee two weeks after meeting them, you're like, they're awesome, amazing. The next character is the grumpy one with a heart of gold. You know them. There's, it's the grumpy bastard. They're usually in charge of something and I think that's what usually brings them down. They're the sort of person everything seems like a massive effort. They walk about with the hunched shoulders like they're carrying the weight of the world on it. They talk to you like they're a teenager. They're like, oh, so unfair. If you ever want to see a grown man having a full-on tantrum, this is the person who's going to do it for you. They always want to let you know that they do not have the time to do the thing that you've asked them to do. But then they do it anyway, and they do it quicker than what you needed it. If they weren't so useful, you'd have beaten them to death. We then move on to the pretty one. There's always a pretty one. There has to be, because it's all relative. There's always someone who's prettier than everybody else. You know, there's sometimes a stammer, oftentimes not. But you know what the saying, how the saying goes, a six in the street is a ten at work. Now I don't know whether that's to do with convenience, proximity, Stockholm Syndrome. Then we have the over-enthusiastic one. <sighs> there's always that one who carries on the joke too far. They just keep it going far too long. The, they've always had an exciting weekend. Everything's really amazing and they're, they're so hyper about everything. They love it when anything different happens, whether it affects them or not. They're like a big dog who is seeing the owner at the end of the day, you know, but they're like that all the time. Usually they're a bit naive. They're the sort of person who, you know, like this, the guy who believes his girlfriend when she says, we're not doing presents for Valentine's Day. Yeah. They're peppy, they're harmless, and you pretty much want to strangle them every day. Then we have the useless one. Also known as the one who no one's quite sure how they still work there. I mean, how some people keep their jobs is astounding. I mean, you commonly see them shuffling papers, typing loudly on the computer. Gotta show people that they're working. Almost hourly, you can hear them mutter, Oh dear, oh dear. That's not good. Like something important has gone wrong in their world. And not just that they put their own card down in free cell. The one that used to work in my place would commonly joke that oh, I'm terrible at this job. I don't even know what my job is sometimes. Obviously hoping for some kind of disagreement. Talk about a void. Then we've got the dangerous one, also known as the one who just wants to see the world burn. There's a darkness to this person. You, you just don't know what's going on in their head and from that point you can't read them. You want to like them, but you're afraid that if you joke too much they're gonna hit you with a stapler. Then we have the clever one. Doesn't really need much explanation. This is a person who doesn't need to show off. They are just that clever. In fact, they tend to placate you quite a bit. For what reason? Usually, just to show you that you are clever too. It's basically patronising you. 
which is absolutely fine. In fact, you find yourself talking to them and you think, oh, wow, they're totally on my wavelength. And you feel like this is a friend for life. Until you make the mistake of saying Vienna when you meant to say Venice, then they'll never, they'll never let you forget it. Heading up to number nine, we have the warrior princess. This is a person who we all want our daughters to be. She is a strong woman and she is scared of nobody. She is not equal to you. She is far more powerful than you are. And you can ever, ever forget this. Sometimes it can be a bit of a pain though, because not every time you try and help someone, you're trying to demean them. It's not a gender thing. You're not trying to patronise. Sometimes you're just trying to help. For God's sake, do not, do not try and mansplain anything to this person. It's more than your life's worth. We then head to the Joker. This is the one that I always wanted to be. I always wanted to be the funny one. As we can all attest to now, I have failed slightly in that endeavour, but that's okay. Because the problem is that you don't realise that to be truly funny, you need to have had a lot of pain in your life. Apparently tragedy is what makes you funnier. And as we can clearly see, I am far too white and privileged to have ever had it that hard. So I'm stuck where I am. However, at least in work, you can steal other people's jokes. And that just makes you seem funnier. Then last, but by no means least, actually, sorry, probably by every means least, we have the pervert. A lot of places have them. If you're lucky, you lose them. If you're not sure who they are, you may be them. You know what I'm talking about. It's that person who always makes you feel uncomfortable at work. No, I'm not meaning like your boss when he asks you if you wouldn't mind working later. I mean, that person that when you're alone in the office with them, you're fully aware of where all the exits are and where all the hands are. The one that we used to have in my place, you had a special nickname for the pretty one. He used to call her Paradise, which on a quick glance, you might think, actually, that sounds all right. That doesn't seem too bad. Except when you realise that it was his heart's de de desire to enter Paradise. Anyway, those are the characters. Thank you all for listening. If you would like to learn what character that you are, then I would suggest visit the Facebook site, Friends from Work, where we will be hosting a quiz, which will tell you who's, what character you are. Or there's a challenge where you can ask your, ask your work colleagues to nominate what kind of character you are. I think, you know, that's got to be for the braver ones among you. Enjoy, stay safe. Until tea soon.